Hello everybody, this is Eren and this is my first 2015 video. Um, in this video I'm going to talk about how I uh, created the concept and how I drew this liner that you're seeing here. And so I'm going to um, show you the various steps and uh, of my process. And uh, I hope it will be helpful, even if not uh, super complicated and <laughs> uh, complete, but I hope it will be helpful or at least interesting for you to see how I work on this kind of stuff. Okay, let's start. Um, as you can see here, I'm working on the silhouette of my character here. And this is something that I've learned uh, from some professional um, illustrators and concept artists. Doing the silhouette uh, helps you understand if the general shape of your character is working, if you like the impact that the character has, and if, you, if there's something that you want uh, to show off in your character, maybe... Um, something uh, from uh, the character's behavior or uh, from the style that you want to give him or her and that's something that should always be very visible from the silhouette so this helps you understand what kind of character you bring into life this could be a very short part of your process like in this case I just wanted to do a quick work but you can also try doing uh, 10 or 15 different shapes if you're trying to work on a character design for a game or maybe for a more complete project. So after the um, silhouette work that you've seen there, you've seen that I've added some details and then I just went on with the anatomy work. If you're not familiar with, with this uh, drawing here, uh, just a few words to explain what I'm doing. This is uh, an alter ego version of myself for a imaginary world uh, high school. Um, I'm on a, a Italian uh, Facebook group uh, dedicated to art and illustration and that kind of stuff, which is called Artisti Nottamboli. And uh, with other artists, we decided to try and draw ourselves in an imaginary world in which uh, we are still high school students of this uh, uh, Artisti Nottamboli high school, which is something absolutely crazy and a little absurd. And so here I'm trying to, to draw this alter ego version of myself. And... Um, I'm giving this character some of the features that I had when I was in high school and that I still have, so you can see here many of my passions and hobbies are uh, perfectly represented in this in this character. So after doing a very very rough sketch, which I which I did with a big brush, you can see the strokes are very big and not not very controlled and and rough. After Doing that general shape um, in which I try to fix the main anatomy problems and uh, position problems, I go on uh, cleaning uh, the, the, the brush, uh, the brush strokes with a um, thinner brush. Um, if you if you don't know what kind of brushes I'm using here, I, I, you, you can check out my video on brushes that I um, will link in the description, and then maybe I will also make it appear on the screen if I understand how to do that. And so, uh, big brush, very rough sketch, then I get to the smaller brush to clean the rough sketch and and I start adding details here. You can see it on the, the belt and the t-shirt and I'm trying to uh, define the shapes of the clothes or the things that I'm that I'm uh, that my character is wearing. So uh, here I'm adding some gloves and a weapon and many of the things that I'm doing here are not yet uh, definitive so I'm just throwing stuff on her. In fact actually in a few moments you will see um, the drawing will change. Yes, here I don't have the cape anymore, I have this jacket because I uh, I forgot to register this small passage in which I changed the, her clothes but that's the only difference you can see here. And so this is a new step. After the very rough sketch with the big brush and the cleaner rough sketch with the th uh, thinner brush, this is the liner part and it's as easy as you see. I just lower the opacity of the rough sketches below and I just go over it with, the, with the, uh, a cleaner um, line. I um, Here I am also actually doing some more of the character design work because I uh, I haven't cleaned up every single detail in the rough sketch and this is something that I usually do in this part of the drawing so 
adding details, adding uh, objects and accessories, and that kind of stuff is always something that I do in this step of the drawing. Um, maybe I have them in mind from before, maybe I just put them very roughly on the uh, first sketch, but this is the part in, of the drawing in which I define various parts of my line art and and just give it a more personal touch. This is my Wacom tablet, by the way. I'll try to explain what I'm drawing here. This is some kind of holder in which I would keep my Wacom tablet and my pens, and I'm going to put on, on, on it all kind of stuff that actually represents me and represented me even more in my high school time. And so you can see some uh, patches and pins and this is all stuff that I have, by the way. Apart from the skirt sock patch, that's something that I don't have. But I don't clean up precisely the lines, because that's something that I'm going to work on with color later. I will probably go over the lines with the color. New part. Here, as you can see, I'm using, uh, I'm using some reference, because I'm not such a genius as a drawing, um, a drawing legs and feet. So that's something that I always feel a bit uncomfortable about, so I always try to keep some reference uh, with me when I, when I draw this kind of stuff. Keep in mind that using reference is not bad. This is not tracing, it's not copying, just keep the reference over there and it will help you uh, clean your thoughts and, and just help you understand how things work in reality will make it easier for you to uh, draw them and to apply them to your uh, to your illustration, to your drawing, to even to your comics, whatever you're doing. Uh, but real life references are useful, guys, and I really think you should keep them uh, with you when you're working on something. This is actually stuff that I own. I have this t-shirt and I have the bag that I'm going to throw later on the a laptop bag on the floor and because um, I, I really am a DeviantArt geek it's, it's in my DNA so again I suck at drawing feet so boot references uh, once again please remember that um, uh, you don't have to copy anything just keep it there uh, remember that uh, photos as illustrations and comics and whatnot they have copyrights so you if you just take a photo and draw over it and it's not very nice of you as an artist but also if you use someone else's work in that in that way you're actually um, breaking the law because that's that's copyrighted stuff so even when you use textures and that kind of stuff if you're using them for commercial uses, uh, always remember that it, uh, the best thing for you would be to get your own references. Like for, but for this kind of stuff, just grab something from the internet that you like, and uh, and just put it right next to you as I'm doing here when when you draw because that's actual actually really helpful, and it's not going to harm anyone. <laughs> um, so. No. What else can I tell you about this kind of stuff? Mm. In case you're wondering, I've never changed the, the brush shape. And um, if you, when you see this, I'm just doing Control J maybe on the Windows or Command J on on the Apple. You on the Macintosh, you just um, duplicate the the thing that you have selected. So if you need more buttons, you just duplicate. The button layer and apply it and then maybe shift it or change it no problem but if you can save your time just a little bit with these little things you can do it it's not it's not um, it's not bad okay you're working on a computer you should learn how to make the best out of it so don't be afraid to, to use this kind of tricks and as people call them sometimes, to, to help yourself. When you're working on hair, or at least that's what I do, I always try to remember that uh, the hair is 
uh, something that is quite often in movement and so uh, except if you're trying to do something that is very still and has a particular uh, impact on the viewer always try to remember that hair is flowing it's moving and um, I just give a, a rough sketch right now but you already see the movement and the, the fact that my hair is not still and, and then I will work on it better with colors of course So other fun stuff here and during the the bag, which I, as I said before, I, I actually have, and just filling it with stuff. Um, I'm doing everything on separate layers just because I'm not sure uh, of the final result. So if I want to shift something, if I want to remove something, I always prefer having everything on different layers. And then maybe I will merge everything at the end, or maybe I will create a new layer with everything merged and keep the separate layers uh, on another folder or another file something like that but I always uh, prefer keeping my stuff uh, in nice order and easy to find and easy to, to see so separate layers name the name the layers it's it could be stupid if you think about it first time but it's actually is very helpful and time-saving Just more, more drawing thing here, the hands. Um, this is the kind of um, construction that I that I use when drawing hands. I use, I work on uh, on hands as on solid uh, geometrical solids. I hope I, I'm saying it right. It really helps me. It's a technique that I've found lately that many many illustrators use. It's not something that I created, of course, and. Uh, if you're having problems, if you're struggling with hands, that's something that you should really try out. Maybe I will I will try to link some nice tutorials about that in the description. And I hope that you will find it in interesting because this, this method actually made made it much more easier for me to to draw hands. I'm using uh, some other references again because I had some problem with the jacket. Uh, so just went on the internet and googled something like jacket windy or blowing wind jacket. Uh, remember that Google is your best friend, guys. And <laughs> if you trust him, <laughs> he will give you uh, lots of very cool results and and will be really, really helpful. So, time to draw the, the sword here. Um, in case you're wondering, I'm, I've drawn the sword uh, because I study fencing, historical fencing, so that's not the fencing that you see at the Olympics, but it's the fencing with broadswords and... Um, yeah, the, the, to say in an easy way, it's the swords that you see in fantasy movies, so like Lord of the Rings stuff. And we don't practice with armors on, we just use the normal fencing protections, but we do use metal swords as these ones. So um, this is actually called, this is what in English you call a uh, uh, rapier, and it's in, in Italian it's a uh, striscia, or spada a striscia. Here I'm using... Um, uh, a reference of a kind of, of striscia that I really like. This is a very elegant, uh, very uh, very elegant sword. So I just realized that I haven't added the protections on the knocks. Oh, I should check that later. Um, I, in case you were wondering, I don't know if I will be posting this online before, but I really think I do. I will be coloring this line art live stream. Uh, in the next few days, so if you see it, uh, please check my Facebook page, without which I will be linking below. 
uh, to see when I will be streaming this or if I have already streamed it and to check for the final result. Okay, so the liner is done here. Uh, just to sum up uh, what I did, uh, I started with a silhouette, very rough black silhouette on white, just to define the shape of my character. Then, then, then I used a very big and rough uh, brush to make the first uh, anatomy and pose shapes, and then refine that very rough sketch with uh, a thinner brush, and then I went on with the polished line art version. And in the polished line art version I added the various details that I had just sketched in the previous versions and um, added some stuff that I still hadn't figured out before. Um, the keywords of this kind of, of, of stuff are uh, always be uh, prepared to change what, you're, what you've sketched before because you might notice some problems with your original sketch and your uh, line art. And don't be afraid of using references, uh, they are really helpful. Real life is the best guide that you might have for this kind of stuff. So, um, last thing, don't forget to check my Facebook page and my DeviantArt or my Google+, Plus, whatever. Subscribe to my channel. Thanks very much for watching. And should you have any question regarding what you saw here or what you... I don't know, if you have any other uh, questions or doubt about digital art, please ask below and I will do my best to answer your questions and maybe give me suggestions for videos that you'd like me to do in the next uh, days or weeks or whatever. Um, okay, thanks and see you next time.